Hey guys, welcome to Math Class with Miss Brown. Before we get started with today's lesson, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more fun math videos. And make sure you guys like this video and share it with your family and friends. Now let's get started with today's lesson. In today's class, you guys are going to learn how to describe and compare the relationship between digits. Let's take a look at our criteria for success. First, we have to think about what is the value of the digits, right? Then we have to say, how many jumps are between the digits or how many spaces are between the place values? And remember, each jump is worth 10 times greater or smaller depending on which direction. Let's jump into some practice. Okay, so what is the relationship between the fours and 53,844, okay? So what is the value of the digits? So first, we have to say, okay, well, that first four and the second four, right, are right beside each other, but we're going to label our place value. We have the ones place and the tens place, right? So even though you see two fours, those are both the same digits, but remember, the value is different. So that four in the ones place is actually a four, and then that four in a tens place, right? If I have four tens, that's going to be 40. The value of those fours are different. That is very, very important for you guys to know. Even though you see a four and a four, you might think it's the same. They are not the same. They are in two different place values, right? So I want you guys to um, remember that one jump is worth 10 times, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. I'm going to jot it down. One jump equals 10 times, right? And then I'm going to also jot down two jumps, right? If one jump is 10 times, two jumps is, what do you think it is? Think about that, right? We're talking about multiplication here, right? So if one jump is 10 times, that means two jumps, right? If we do two of those, that's going to be 100 times, okay? So as we get further on in the video, we will talk about the other jumps, right? So as you can see, the four in the ones place and the four in the tens place, they are right beside each other. So think about it. How many jumps will it take to get from the four in the ones place to the four in the tens place? It will take one jump. See? See that? One jump. One jump. So we know that one jump is what? Yep. One jump is 10 times. So it is safe to say that the four in the ones place, which is four, four is 10 times. Think about it. So it's four greater than or is four smaller than 40? Think about that. So we would say 4 is 10 times less than 40. Or we could say 4 is 10 times fewer than 40, right? We could say 4 is 10 times smaller than 40. Whatever keyword you want to use, but just make sure that keyword uh, relates to 4 being smaller, right? The smaller number than 40, right? So we also can write this another way. We know that 4 is 10 times less than 40. Now let's think about it if we wanted if we wanted to think about the 40, right? So we have 40. So we know 40 is the bigger number between the two, right? So we could say 40 is, right? It's still one jump between them. It doesn't change. 40 is 10 times. Now think about it. Is 40 bigger than 4 or is 40 smaller than 4, right? So that's going to help you with that keyword. So we got 40, right, is 10 times what? Greater, right? We could say 40 is 10 times greater than 4. Or we could say 40 is 10 times larger than 4. Or we can say 40 is 10 times bigger than 4. As long as you just make sure that that keyword relates to 40 being the bigger number than 4, you're good to go, okay? So you guys, you know, I know this seems like a lot. But just hang in there, right? So when we want to have an equation to match those statements below, right? We can start with our uh, smaller digit, which is the 4, right? And think about it. How many jumps we got to make between both those digits? One jump is 10, right? So that's why we did 4 times 10. And 4 times 10 is 40. So this expression that we just created, it matches, you know, the expressions that you see here at the bottom here, okay? All right. I know this seems like a lot, but we're going to have more and more practice, okay? Okay, so before we get further on in the video with more practice, I wanted to just have a little discussion with you guys about um, the jumps, right? And I think that this is very important for you guys to get a better understanding of what the jumps mean and how much they are, right? So here I'm going to uh, create the place value chart. We're going to do the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, the thousands place, and the ten thousands place. And we're going to stop right here, right? We're going to stop right here because I don't want to overwhelm you guys. But 
what's most important is that you guys understand the concept that's going on here, right? To understand um, why we are making these jumps and what the jumps actually mean, right? So if I start in the ones place and I make one jump, from the ones place to the tens place. That was just one jump. And always remember that one jump is just 10 times, right? That's it. So if I do a jump from the ones place to the tens place, and then see that's one jump right there. Remember, each jump is 10 times. And then the, the jump from the tens place to the hundreds place, that's another jump and that's 10 times. So altogether we did two jumps, right? We did two jumps. So we got one jump there, okay? And another jump there because each jump is 10 times. So you take both of your jumps and you multiply them. And all together we have 100. Up, oh, you can't see it on the side of the board, but you guys see the 100, right? So two jumps is equal to 100, right? So just keep in mind that each jump, right? Each jump is equal to 10 times. That's very important, okay? So that changes depending on how many jumps you do. If you do one jump, it's 10 times, as you guys can see on the board. If you do two jumps, that is 100 times, right? If you do three jumps, that is 1,000 times. If you do four jumps, that's 10,000 times. But I'm going to show you guys what that actually looks like because I'm saying it, but you need to know what it looks like, okay? If I start from the ones place and go to the tens place, the tens place and go to the hundreds place, the hundreds place and go to the thousands place, right? So I'm just going to make sure that I know that my jumps are 10 times, right? So from the ones place to the tens place, that's one jump. So that's going to be 10 times. So now from the tens place to the hundreds place, that's another jump. So that's going to be 10 times, right? And then from the hundreds place, right? From the hundreds place to the thousands place, that is another jump. So that's going to be 10 times. So how many jumps did I make from the ones place all the way to the ten to the thousands place? I'm sorry. I made three jumps, okay? We're just going to multiply those three jumps. 10 times 10 times 10 is, right? Remember, each jump is 10. So that's why we did it three times because we did three jumps. So 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1, right? And then we got 1, 2, 3. We got three zeros. I'm just going to put my three zeros there. And that is 1,000. So three jumps is 1,000 times, right? So that's what that means when we say uh, each jump is 1,000, okay? Okay, let's have a little bit more practice. So what is the relationship between the sixes and 4,626? So we have a six there and a six here, right? So the six here is in the ones place. And we have the tens place. And then the six here is in the hundreds place, right? So remember, our CFS says to, um, what is, you got to ask yourself, what is the value of the digits, right? That's what the CFS says, right? So we have a six in the ones place, right? The value of that is six, right? And then we have a six in the hundreds place. If I have six hundreds, the value is six hundred. So we know that we're working with six and six hundred. So now we have to ask ourselves, how many jumps are between the digits, right? So if I go from the ones place to the hundreds place, how many jumps is that, right? Or how many spaces are between the place values, right? So I have one, two. I see that there's two jumps. Two jumps is 100 times, right? So just keep that in mind, right? So whether we go to the left or the right, it is 100 times, okay? So now, remember, each jump is worth 10 times greater or smaller depending on the direction, right? So now it is going to be time to write our statements, right? Write our statements to make this true, right? So we have, let's start with the smaller number six. So we could say six, right? Six is, right, remember how many jumps did we make? We made two jumps, so that's why we know that that is 100 times, right? 100 times. So six is 100 times, right? And think about that. Is six smaller than or bigger than 600? It's smaller than. So think of a keyword that relates to small. So six is 100 times, let's just say smaller, right? Six is 100 times smaller than... 600. Yeah, that's good. That's good to say. We could say 6 is 100 times smaller than 600, or we could say 6 is 100 times less than 600, or 6 is 100 times fewer than 600. Just remember, just relate, just make sure you make that keyword related to 6 being smaller than 600, okay? So, um, yeah, so let's write it another way. Let's try it with uh, 600 first, right? So let's do 600. So we could say 6 is, not 6, I'm sorry, 600 is, remember, it's still two jumps between both digits, so that's still 100 times. 600 is 100 times, 
Remember, 600 is what? Bigger than 6 or smaller than 6? It's definitely bigger. So think of a keyword that relates to bigger. We could say 600 is 100 times larger. Yes, larger connects to bigger. Yeah, 600 is 100 times larger than 6. Right, or we could just say 600 is 100 times bigger than six, whichever way you want to say it, just make sure that that keyword relates to 600 being bigger, right, than six. Okay, so let's start with our equation. We're going to start with the six because that's a smaller value. So, six times 100, and we times it by 100 because uh, we did two jumps, and two jumps is 100. So, six times 100 is 600, right? So, that's how we know that. This um, equation matches the statement below, right? How do you guys feel? How do you feel? All right, let's go on to the next one. So now we have, what is the relationship between the threes and 3,763? But what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause this video, right? Get your paper and pencil, and I want you to try to do this on your own. Tell me the relationship between the threes, okay? And then when you're done, we're going to come back together. Okay, you guys should be done, right? Okay, so what is the relationship between the threes and 3,763? So we have a three there, right, in the ones place, and then that's a tens, hundreds place, and then we have this three in a thousands place, okay? So just always make sure that you label your uh, place value, right? So this three in the ones place is three, and that three in a thousands place is what? Three thousands is three thousand, right? So, um, yeah, so always remember, follow your CFS, and it says, what is the value of the digits? So we um, wrote down the values of each digit, like it says here at the top. So now we have to ask ourselves, how many jumps are between the digits, right? So we got, let's count. We got the ones place, we have one, two, three. That's three jumps from the ones place to the thousands place or from the thousands place all the way to the ones place. Three jumps is 1,000 times. So we went ahead and checked that off, okay? So now it's time to write our statements, right? Let me erase that and then um, we write it here, right? So we could say that three is, remember it was three jumps, so that's 1,000 times. So three is 1,000, okay? 1,000 times. So ask yourself, is 3 uh, bigger than 3,000 or is 3 smaller than 3,000, right? Yes, 3 is smaller than 3,000. So now we have to think of a keyword that will relate to small. We can use the word small or we can just use a keyword. So let's say less. Let's say less. Less relates to small, right? So let's say 3 is 1,000 times less than 3,000, okay? That's safe to say. But remember, we could say 3 is 1,000 times smaller than 3,000, or 3 is 1,000 times fewer than 3,000, okay? So now let's do it the other way around. So now we have 3,000 is, how many jumps did we make? We made three jumps, which is 1,000. So 3,000 is 1,000 times, think about it, is 3,000 bigger than 3, or is it smaller than 3? Yeah, 3,000 is bigger than 3. So what keyword can we use to relate to bigger, right? We can use the word bigger or we can use another word, right? That means the same thing. So we're going to say larger, okay? Let's let's play around with it. Let's say larger. So we're going to say 3,000 is 1,000 times larger than 3. And there you go, guys. Did you guys get this right? Good job, good job, good job. So um, if you didn't, if you're still struggling, don't worry, right? The more practice, the better you will become, okay? So let's just think about it this way. If I cross out the thousand times, right? I'm going to cross out the thousand times, right? And I'm going to read these statements and see if they make sense, right? So three is less than 3,000. Does that make sense? Yep, three is less than 3,000, right? That's true. How many times less? 1,000 times less, right? But I crossed it out. So we can also ask ourselves, 3,000 is larger than 3. Is that true? Yes, 3,000 is larger than 3. How many times larger? 1,000 times larger, okay? So that's another way you guys can um, think about it, okay? Just read your statement um, and make sure it makes sense. Okay, that's the end of today's lesson. You guys did amazing. Remember, it's going to take more practice. But before you go, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share this video with your classmates and your family and friends if they need help in math. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Miss Brown underscore the underscore math underscore teacher and on TikTok at Miss Brown the math teacher. I'll see you guys in the next class. Bye.